Okay, yeah. Hello once more. Uh, this morning, as I looked out of the window of my hotel, I had a strange thought. That was someone who is not so much familiar with retinal oximetry uh, might think that is something black magic done by people who are meeting always in the darkest time of the year in a very dark northern place. <laughs> but of course, we all know that is not the case. It has a uh, scientific rationale and uh, background uh, which uh, relies on the, on the spectroscopy and, and, and the spectra of hemoglobin. But uh, all of you also know that sometimes we see things like that, that there is a very irregular uh, oxygen saturation apparent on the vessel. The same might see on the, on the veins something like, uh, where is my pointer? Something like that, that we, in the vein here, have an area with, with uh, such high oxygen saturation that uh, is very improbable and uh, we think that it's an artifact and that's why what I uh, intending to do here is not just giving a torque more or less it's it's just uh, starting a discussion with two goals first to warn all that of you who are using that clinically and, and just taking the numbers to think about uh, which uh, perturbation we might have and, and which confounders we have to be aware of and to start a discussion under the people who are developing the techniques how we can cope with it. So that's why I don't want to go deeply into the details of retinal oximetry. We all know about that. We rely on the oxygen uh, uh, on the, on the, the uh, hemoglobin spectra, which are different between the oxygenated and the, the deoxygenated hemoglobin taking two wavelengths, in this case of the Emeros device, with a two wavelength filter fitting to the sensitivity of the <coughs> channels of the color camera. And then we end up with two images, one in the red and one in the green. Here we see all the vessels very nicely, whereas the arteries are blurred out in the uh, red image. And if we now take a measurement along this line, we get these profiles and measure optical densities. You know about that. The optical density ratio so finally is related to the oxygen saturation, is proportional to the oxygen saturation, as we learned from this uh, pioneering paper by Beach. Well, and now what can happen? So look at that vessel, for instance. This is a vein, uh, but with quite irregular oxygen saturation or apparent oxygen saturation. And what might be the reason here? If we look at the green image, it's um, yeah, it's a dark vessel on a more or less homogeneous background. But uh, if we look onto the red image, we see that there is a lot of irregularity uh, coming from the chorate. It is, on the one hand, um, coronal vascularization. On the other hand, coronal pigmentation from the irregular uh, distribution of uh, <coughs> melanocytes and if we now, this is a contrast enhancement, and if we now take a cross section here, is, it looks like that. So we have much lower reflectivity at the one side of the vessel than at the other. And that's if we, we uh, uh, combine values measured here and here. Uh, for the, the vessel background, obviously we will end up with wrong data and, and finally with wrong oxygen saturation measurements. So furthermore, we see this uh, problem of, of uh, uh, disturbed oxy oxygen saturation values uh, predominantly in, in smaller vessels in this uh, 30 degree fundus image, we have it at diameters below 75 microns. And of course, we have to think about the uh, <coughs> B 
background irregularities. So another ex uh, example is this vessel. Uh, again, a vein, but looking uh, at least in part more or less like an artery. So what is the pro might be the problem here? You see, this is a fundus which is again very irregularly pigmented in the way with, that we have uh, very uh, low reflectivity values here compared to high values in this region. And if we want to do the measurement all over the, the uh, fundus, we end with uh, very low reflectivity values here. Here is the, the histograms. And it, this is in the order of 40 out of 256 in the green uh, channel. And if we now compare it with the reflectivity outside uh, the fundus here in the, in the background, you see it is in the order of uh, nearly 10% of the reflectivity at the fundus. And if we don't compensate for that, then we, of course, may uh, get wrong uh, ox optical density values. That means. I would recommend always to measure the background besides the fundus image and su subtract that. Another problem you see here. This again is an artery, but showing apparently too low oxygen saturation values. What might the reason if we look at the uh, both channels, you see uh, that this vessel is embedded in, uh, in nerve fiber layer, nicely seen here in, in the, uh, this nerve fiber striation here. And if we now take cross section here, we have uh, much too high reflection here from these nerve fibers, which again may result in a um, higher optical density ratio, of course, and finally in, in too low oxygen saturation values for this uh, artery. So that means caution with vessels embedded in the retinal nerve fiber layer. Another example you do see here, again an artery with too low oxygen saturation values. Uh, here we face another problem. Looking at the red image here, you see that it is, ha has a strong vessel reflex, seen here also in the cross section. And yeah, we know about the, the vessel reflex problem, of course. And we try to cope with that, I think, differently. Correct me if I'm wrong. but. If I'm informed right, the uh, oximap oxy device takes only the lowest value of the reflection, and by that, of course, uh, circumvents the the vessel reflex here. <coughs> the emails does it's uh, a little bit different. It takes all all the values of the cross section, but om omits the highest 30 percent of the reflection, and by that tries to to uh, <coughs> sort out the reflex. However, we not only have the problem of this reflex, we only also have another problem. If we look at the, here in the, in the schematic drawing, here, this is of course our specular re reflex. But what is with the light impinging here? It is also specularly reflected, but this, that direction. That means all of the uh, aperture of the eye, and that's why we don't see it in our measurement. And by that, uh, the vessel uh, vessel borders here uh, apparently are too dark, darker than they uh, should be if the reflection is only uh, influenced by hemoglobin absorption. <coughs> well, of course, the, we thought about uh, 
the question whether this uh, is an effect w which has a consider considerable influence it's according to the Fresnel reflection formula. We know that the reflection degree depends on the angle <coughs> of incidence, on the refractive index mismatch, and of the absorption of the optical media here uh, <coughs> described by the K value, what is the uh, imaginary part of the refractive index. And in the, uh, at the border between vitreous and retina, we certainly have low reflective, uh, refractive index mismatch and uh, also probably quite low reflectivity. That means maybe we end up about here. And that means that the uh, reflectivity is only in the order of, of some percent <coughs> for, for technical optics for the interface glass to, uh, and air we always uh, uh, talk about a reflectivity of 4% four, four so I guess here in, in the case of the reflectivity of the in, in a limiting membrane we are in the maybe 1% range and the question <coughs> is does this really influence our, our reading at the vessel but I think it, it could be because this is uh, the reflectance spectra of the retina and you see here in the, the region where we are measuring we are all also in the lower percent region so that if we think about an uh, additional reflection <coughs> by specular reflex uh, of one percent this wouldn't make a difference so that means this uh, loss of, of light by a specular reflection can uh, actually produce an artifact. So, in summary, which perturbations <coughs> we have to face and what can we do? First, of course, we have sometimes ir irregular brightness over the image and we sometimes have two dark images. What can we do? Of course, we can we also should always should should look for optimal uh, image quality, but all of you know that this is not always uh, uh, possible to achieve in, in everyday patients who are elderly, who have maybe beginning cataract. So, what we uh, certainly should do in order to to cope with the problem at least a little bit is the background subtraction. Next problem is the cardinal structure. So if we have uh, vessel profiles looking like that, <coughs> what would you do? Some ideas from the audience? What can we do? We can do averaging. Averaging. Yeah, that is what we do. We, we average the left side, left, right hand side, and, and then we end up with a too low value for the reflection uh, beside <coughs> the vessels. Of course, we all, always can do averaging along the vessel. Uh, we do it in, in, uh, yeah. in a certain way. If we take for, for the, if we want to get the oxygen separation values for one eye we average uh, over a, a ring around the papilla yeah that's something we, we can do we can think about using only the brighter side of the reflection beside the vessels don't know whether this would give correct values we can think about measuring separately uh, the reflections on the left and the, the right hand side and, and look which ox oxygen saturation value looks appropriate then we also can fail of course yeah so next if we have nerve fiber layer reflection ending up with a vessel profile looking like that what could we do? Who has an idea? Using a cross polarization. 
Yeah, maybe. Uh, however, this will not completely uh, circumvent the problem because, um, yeah, if we illuminate with uh, polarized light, linearly polarized light, uh, we will end up with elliptical polarized light at the fundus because of the birefringence of the anterior optical media. And that's why we certainly should get a decrease of the uh, vessel, of, of the nerve fiber reflex, but we will, will, won't get rid of it completely. So, yeah, what... I <coughs> just ask, what does the imidose and the oxymath map uh, techniques do? Because clearly, cross polarized light, as you say, will give you a benefit. Do, uh, do you use cross polar light? Or do we, you we, we don't do it. It is uh, just, uh, yeah, if we do it, uh, we would need much more light and would make the measurement more uncomfortable for the patient. Okay. With the oxymath, it's not, it's, not, it's not a part of the system, but we have looked at it. Then maybe talk, uh, talk a little bit more. Yeah, it's, <coughs> it's possible, but as, as you say, we have a, a lot of flash power. So, one, yeah? Doesn't, doesn't uh, Denning Hart use the mechanical stop in the middle to eliminate the effects from blood, blood vessels? Sorry, I, I didn't Denning get it. Denning Hart uh, yeah? used uh, a, a mechanical block to reflex, to remove. Is that, that not in an SLO? It was. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that he doesn't he, he measures the, something like in indirect in indirect mode. So illuminating at one point and, and measuring right. besides the, the illuminated spot. Yeah. Yeah. That may, might help, yes. What would be rather simple is just thinking about cutting off the, the, the highest values here uh, in the vessel uh, vicinity so that we just uh, think to, to cut off the, the brightest uh, reflections from the nerve fibers that are all only suggestions. That does not mean that this really works. I didn't try it, but, but uh, I thought, just thought what we could do. So what could we do with the vessel reflex if we have a problem like that, that we have light loss in the margin of the vessel? Or could we cope with that? Someone an idea? Uh, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what would be uh, simple, but but what I, I think is not the solution is that we just do nothing, so that we hope that this uh, increased reflection is compensating the the loss here. But uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not convinced that this really works. So, and what do we do with the small vessels below? 75 microns, should we omit them generally or better <coughs> only omit them if the oxygen saturation values are not reliable? Has someone experience with that? Well, we should <coughs> not uh, omit them because uh, they contain uh, information that, may, uh, that we may not be able to extract from the uh, larger vessel. So so they are very important, I think, from a physiological point of view. And there are many ways to deal with them. I mean, the magnification is one very simple way. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the software uh, adjustments to, to uh, so indeed we can go for, for the, uh, the smaller vessels, and we should. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Yeah. I, I think you're looking for an image processing answer, but I think there are other answers to do with the optics, which bring up on Laura's point of view. You can try and effectively produce a black uh, illumination system by using some strict mm -hmm. illumination. So, for example, if I illuminate the eye with a grid, I get lots of dark grids, but between the dark grids is effectively black illuminated by diffuse light. 
Mm -hmm. And I guess that yeah. wouldn't have that problem. Yeah, maybe. Prevent transcribing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I found uh, very impressive was uh, the influence of the, influence of, of the pigmentation, mm -hmm. uh, especially on the red image. So how, how do we deal with that? What is your recommendation? Uh, should we check uh, uh, the green and the red image for, for, for every measurement we do? And my second question would be related to that. I mean, if somebody has very low pigmentation on, 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 uh, on the retina, so can we uh, exclude the influence of the coral uh, uh, circulation? So that, um, I, I don't know, that the system is influenced by the coral? I suppose it is, yes. Uh, so it is another factor what would give us um, corruption of our retinal oximetry readings if we have uh, low pigmentation and th by that seeing the blood <coughs> behind the retina, of course. Yes. I think I have a sort of physiological question. Do you really need to measure blood oxygenation at every point along the vessel? Or could you just break the vessel up into areas where you have high confidence that you have a physical model that works well, and then effectively have an exclusion criteria that is where you have problems with texture. From a physiological point of view, is that useful to just have oxygenation at points, at several points along the vessel, but not continuously? They might give sure, you more but, but then you, you, you need clear exclusion exactly. criteria, mm -hmm. which values have to be discarded. So I would, I would exclude the top ones. If I like yeah, sure, yeah, exactly. sure, yeah. Can I ask you a thing? Yeah. Um, if, if you have a phenomenon like reflection, mm -hmm. Then you also have refraction. Yeah. And uh, when you're talking about refraction, you may have chromatic aberrations. Yeah. Does that affect uh, the oximetry data and does it affect the apparent diameter of the vessel? Uh, that's a good question, yes. Basically, yes, but I can't tell you to which extent. No. But it, it might be a possible. And yeah, 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 sure. Chromatic yeah. aberration yeah. might have an effect, but uh, yeah, the, the difference between the the both wavelengths we use is not very very big. So hopefully it is, it is only hopefully a minor it, it's effect. Not a yeah, that, but yeah. Yeah. basically we have it, of course. Okay, I know. Yeah, I think it's it's very good that we focus in on on the artifact and the variability and the problems with, with uh, uh, the technology. But uh, we, at the same time, we, we do need to put it into perspective. And if we look at oximetry as a biomarker, it has lower standard deviations in, a pop in population studies than almost any biomarker that we use. The OCT or the IOP or uh, 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 whatever we look at has, has uh, uh, usually a higher standard, standard uh, deviation in a population study than does oximetry. So in spite of all of these problems, and they are very real, uh, mm. it's, it's pretty damn good. That's just the, the sort of overall uh, uh, perspective. The one, uh, uh, and then a different one. The, uh, uh, we have all been looking at uh, uh, the oximetry data in the context of maps. So we have two, uh, two dimensional maps uh, 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 of the funders and we look at that and of course we do see the variability that comes from the variable uh, uh, pigmentation etc. There is another way to look at the data and it has been done by some the Australian group uh, published a, a paper with frequency histograms and the nice thing about frequency histograms is that they help us ignore the outliers mm -hmm. so, that I so that even if we have a few points which are basically off the reservation because of the you know, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, different uh, things that you have mentioned, the frequency histograms are, are, are basically allow us to disregard those. So especially when, when we're looking at uh, uh, the funders from a sort of uh, uh, a holistic point of view, that is where, where the entire funders is the same. So this is not, not being a BRVO, but in diabetes or in, in uh, Alzheimer's or whatnot, uh, then uh, that statistical approach might be much better because it will give us immediately a, 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 a median for, uh, the for the arterial and venous uh, uh, saturation. So
So I think that that nature <coughs> approach that we, as, as a field, should look uh, uh, more closely at and use uh, uh, parallel with with, mm -hmm. with, with, uh, with the mapping. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I agree totally with that about looking at the histograms, but I think the exclusion criteria in every to hence that enhance that because clearly what you lose in the histogram is any context of why something might be a completely and distribution. But as Martin's highlighted, it's probably not too hard to come up with a set of exclusion criteria, which then do to enhance your histogram. Right, make it more reliable. Yes, I mean, we do want both, I mean, exactly, uh, yeah. uh, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And maybe uh, on the point that you asked, sort of going along the vessel uh, and picking sort of the best points, I mean, one way of doing that is is, is averaging along, along the length of the vessel, which I think we all do. And, and that is sort of an approach in that. Thing. Very good. That was sort of yes. an academic question to your point. The, you, you mentioned in the limiting membrane being a, the, a potential cause for the reflex. Mm -hmm. There's other work that's been published which suggests that it actually could be, due, with, with OCT, looking at the reflections through the vessel, suggesting it could be due to alignment of the blood cells that do laminar flow. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've thought about whether that is. I don't know if it makes any difference whatsoever to the mm -hmm. analysis. I don't know. But I the physics point of view, it's yep. an interesting alternative view, which perhaps has some other impact. I don't know. Um, but certainly, you get some enhanced reflection at the edges due to the alignment of the blood cells. Which I'm, uh, but I don't know whether that's. Yeah, I, I, I don't have any idea. T according to my understanding, really, we have the reflection basically here at the inner limiting membrane. But yeah, <coughs> it might be if you have the irregular blood flow and, and the, the column of the erythrocytes is irregular. Then we you might have we only opinion. see this reflection on arteries, don't we? And I, and I don't know why you wouldn't see it on veins due to the, in the, in the limiting membrane. I think that the arteries are more prominent. OK. Yeah. 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 So any other yeah. question? I was wondering about the uh, choice of wavelengths. Uh, some of these uh, <coughs> components will probably uh, cancel out to some degree when you take the optical density ratio. So if you have a dark image, you will have a dark image, uh, let's say you have a dark image to the right. Yeah, yeah, sure. You'll have the same problem in both wavelengths, so it will cancel out to some degree. So I'm just wondering whether <coughs> you can uh, partially solve some of these problems by, I don't know, choosing the wavelength differently. If you have a, a Hyperlayer reflection in one wavelength, and we have, have it uh, in a similar way in another wavelength, then you would correct for it in a okay, in some way. We're, we're, we're not free in the selection of no, the no, 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 no. I'm just wondering whether we could do better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we do have a reference. So, uh, you know, you have, we have the 570, you have the 548. Yeah, and they have a third yeah. reference. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. It just gives you the you know, being uh, old enough to, to uh, remember almost the entire history. <laughs> the, the, uh, 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 in the old days, we looked at many, many different wavelengths, went down to uh, uh, 530, and, 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 uh, and we found that, if that, if that uh, uh, in the green, uh, we found more variability. So, the, so if we have, let's say, uh, 605 for the, for the red, and then uh, uh, 532 uh, for the green, the variability was much greater than if we used 605 and let's say uh, uh, 586. Mm -hmm. uh, so moving the wavelengths together reduces uh, variability. That's that's an empirical fact, and I know Andy can can explain it uh, 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 from theoretical uh, uh, point of view. And it may also have to do with, and you mentioned specifically the nerve fiber uh, uh, reflex, and certainly. In clinical use, we see it much better in the green than yes, we see it in red. I mean, it's uh, so the reflection may be uh, uh, wavelength uh, dependent. Certainly, it is. Yes. You also have seen it in my, my image in the red. It was not so prominent than in the green image. Yes. I think true. we'll have to continue. Yeah. 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 Okay. To be on time, and the next presenter will be Ella. Yeah. Uh -huh.